Insects are a common fear among humans. Evolutionarily, certain bugs are notorious for spreading diseases and in some cases even being deadly. Arachnids like the brown recluse and the Brazilian wandering spider hold venoms that are extremely painful or deadly in high enough dosages. Wasps and hornets exist to defend their territory and sting anything that gets close to them. Mosquitoes have been responsible for spreading diseases throughout history, yellow fever, malaria, Zika virus, and West Nile virus, to name a few. However, what's less commonly discussed are ticks. They are similar to mosquitoes. They latch onto mammals and consume their blood by use of a thin needle-like mouth. They are also responsible for countless diseases, the most infamous being Lyme disease. These animals are parasitic in nature and depend on mammals like humans for sustenance. Human beings are social creatures and because of our behavior, it's been made pretty easy for us to make friends, find relationships, connect with our parents, or do well in the workplace. The ability for humans to find these connections so easily allowed us to become the dominant species on Earth. Without this ability, human beings would not be in the place we are currently. Today, you may have gone out with a few friends, spoke to your loved ones, or said hi to someone on the street. Imagine if these attempts to continue human connection were instead met with silence, blank stares, and disgust. While in the world of the SCP Foundation, this fantasy is a reality for a few unlucky people who ran into some uncontained anomalies before the SCP Foundation could properly intervene. It was a mild, breezy summer day, perfect for a picnic or relaxing outside with a refreshing beverage. The weather was ideal, and Daniel Arnoldson was up bright and early hoping to take full advantage of it. It had been weeks of what felt like an infinite heat wave, making long periods of daylight unbearable. So Daniel and his wife Eliza were itching to get a nice day outside, and now it came. After going over some ideas, they decided on taking a nice hike through the nearby trail in the mountains. They began packing their backpacks, bear spray, granola, water, and rain clothes in case this weather turned its back on the people who were basking in its glory. They also brought some picnic supplies for when they reached the summit of the mountain. The car ride to the hiking trail was uneventful, but the couple was happy. They were the epitome of high school sweethearts. The two had been dating since their freshman year of high school, and it was practically love at first sight. Dan and Eliza were almost inseparable. They spent every hour with each other and never got bored of each other's presence. They went to every school dance together and even wore matching outfits every time. Aww, how cute, right? There was always something to talk about, always something to laugh about and they never even had a real argument. They went to the same college to stay close and got married right after graduation. It was meant to be. Dan and Eliza were seemingly perfect together in every way, and to be out of the house with bearable weather was making them even more happy. They arrived at the start of the trail and began their trek in the beautiful weather. It was long and it was tiring, but with each other at their sides, they encouraged themselves to finish it and have their picnic. Eventually, they made it to the top. Dan, who was more tired than Eliza, left picnic setup duties to her and took a seat in the grass. His exhaustion got the better of him, and he laid down. It seems the couple forgot one important item. Bug repellent. I guess they're not so perfect after all, huh? As soon as Daniel laid himself onto the grass, a small, almost invisible tick latched itself onto the back of his neck. He didn't notice it and sat up as soon as the picnic mat was placed down and moved onto it. They shared a nice meal and sat for some time. As the sun began to set, the couple made their way back down the mountain and returned home, now with their new, unknown visitor, the Tick. The next morning, something changed in Eliza. It was a Monday, so Daniel had to get up early for work. Normally, he's met with a groggy kiss and a sluggish good morning from his wife, but this day, he didn't get that. Dan brushed it off. Ah, she was probably just tired from the hike, he thought to himself, and headed to work. The day went by the same as most work days, putting in the hours, excited to get back home to his lovely wife for a nice evening of Netflix and chill. But he returned to something he never expected to see. As he pulled into his driveway, he saw all of his belongings. Shirts, pants, shoes, books, pieces of technology, even the gifts he bought for Eliza all left in a heaping pile on the pavement outside of their house. He was appalled. 
His heart began to race as questions flooded his mind. Did, did I do something wrong? Did I say something hurtful? I, I thought she had a good time yesterday. What happened? He frantically barged into the house and immediately yelled for his wife. Eliza! But there was no response. Eliza? He cried again, but to no avail. Either she wasn't home or he was being completely ignored. He ventured through the many rooms of his home, looking for any sign of his wife. Dan found her in her office and said her name to her again. Eliza? No response. She didn't even look at him. What's going on, Eliza? Why aren't you talking to me? He yelled at her. No response. He pushed Eliza's desk out of the way and stood in front of her, but was met with a blank, forward-facing stare. Nothing. She didn't even seem to see him. Daniel went to touch his wife's shoulder, and upon contact, her face turned to disgust and she recoiled, but she still didn't look at him. For the next five hours, Daniel tried his hardest to get the smallest amount of acknowledgement from his wife, but all he was met with was silence, blank stares, and a face of disgust whenever he went to touch her. Day turned to night as Daniel's pleas to his wife continued. It went on for so long that a nearby neighbor called the police, and Daniel was arrested and placed in a criminal psychiatric ward for the time. He stayed there for a few days as police interviewed Eliza. They asked her a number of questions regarding Daniel, but she didn't even know who Daniel was. She was shown pictures of them together, but there was no sign of recognition from her. She couldn't even see him in the pictures. That is when the SCP Foundation agents embedded in the local law enforcement sniffed out that there was a potential anomaly involved in this event. The SCP Foundation agents wrangled oversight away from the original police officers and began their investigation. They interviewed Daniel, where he told them the story of the hike and about the day after it. The SCP Foundation researchers, still posing as police and medical professionals, were stumped. What could cause such a loving couple to detach from one another like that? And why was Eliza acting as if she couldn't even see Daniel? After a medical examination, the tick Dan had been bitten by during the hike was found to be still attached to him. It was removed, and Daniel was allowed to go free from the psychiatric ward. Sadly, Daniel went missing the next day. The following note was found in a diary he began writing in since the start of the event. All alone. Always alone. She couldn't see me. No matter what I did, she couldn't care. I, I thought we were happy. And one day I come back home and all of my stuff is out on the pavement. When I go inside, she acts like I don't even exist. I shout at her and I shake her, but nothing works. She just walks around me like I'm not there. I scream at her for hours, hours, and she just ignores me. Every time I touch her, she gets that disgusted look on her face like I'm some scum. So I took it off forever. She's a backstabber and a liar. She had it coming. She got what she deserved. Why didn't she just love me anymore? Daniel was just as confused as the SCP Foundation. He lost his relationship, the love of his life, for no reason. And now he can't even talk to her as he's just met with silence and a blank stare. There was seemingly no answer, and the SCP Foundation researchers were lost as to where to start. After a few days of scratching their heads, researchers recalled the tick they removed from Daniel's neck. As weird and as entertaining a tick as the possible culprit of a bad breakup may seem, remember this is the SCP Foundation, and they have people running around in there obsessed with the idea of eating bread in hopes to poop out toast because they think they're a toaster for 343's sake. <clears throat> anyway, back to the tick. The SCP Foundation began testing on it, and just as their hunch suggested, it turned out that it was far from a common tick. It merely resembled one. The tick is now designated SCP-1655. The Foundation also found something incredibly peculiar. SCP-1655 does not follow the common life cycle of a normal tick, and it does not require the normal sustenance a non-anomalous tick of its species would need to survive. They found the specimen to be extremely aggressive. It will immediately target the nearest mammal, whether it be a small animal or a full-grown human. SCP-1655 will latch itself onto their body and begin drawing blood. Given how dangerous this anomaly could be if not properly contained within safe parameters, the SCP Foundation assigned it to the Euclid level of containment classes. To ensure that SCP-1655 does not attach itself to anyone of real importance at the SCP Foundation, 
the following containment procedures were devised. SCP-1655 will be kept in a 5 by 5 by 5 centimeter plexiglass container. Importantly, any handling of SCP-1655 that requires the opening of its container is to be performed by D-Class personnel only. Guess that D does really stand for disposable, huh? While the Foundation suspected SCP-1655 as being the culprit for the seemingly anomalous effects that ended with Daniel and Eliza breaking up, they needed to run some tests to be sure that SCP-1655 was in fact the danger they thought it was. The first test began with a female tabby cat and its kitten. The kitten was placed in its own chamber with SCP-1655. In mere seconds, the tick latched onto the young cat. The kitten was then placed in the same testing chamber as its mother, and the mother cat no longer acknowledged the kitten's existence. The kitten meowed and cried for its mother's attention. However, no signs of recognition were observed from the mother cat. Later, the kitten's attempts to feed from its mother were also met with resistance. Because of this, the kitten was not able to get enough sustenance, and thus starved to death. Researchers also found another odd feature about SCP-1655. A viscous, plasma-like substance appeared in SCP-1655's blood sac. Another test was conducted, this time on a D-Class subject. SCP-1655 was introduced to D-236. After a period of a few hours, D-236 was asked to contact his grandmother who raised him from the age of five years old and on. When on the phone, D-236's grandmother did not appear to recognize or even hear D-236's voice. The overseeing researcher then took the phone and began to question D-236's grandmother about D-236. The old woman didn't understand what the researcher was talking about and had no memories of D-236. SCP Foundation researchers then assigned a meeting between D-236 and his grandmother. Upon meeting, the old woman showed no sign of acknowledgement towards her grandson. A researcher asked D-236 to touch his grandmother on the arm. He reached out toward her, and she immediately recoiled with a look of disdain on her face, but looking right through him. What do you feel, ma'am? A researcher asked the old woman. I don't know. It's like something spooky or something. Over the period of the meeting, D-236 grew extremely emotionally distressed and had to be removed from the meeting location. Notably, SCP-1655 appeared engorged following this meeting as if it was filled with blood. From these tests, the SCP Foundation and its researchers were able to devise the following list of phenomenon that will occur when SCP-1655 latches to a subject. Number 1. Any living being the affected subject held any degree of affection for will immediately lose all memory of the subject's existence. This includes minor interactions to lifelong relationships. The people who once knew the victim will also be unable to create or acquire any new memories concerning the victim or anything surrounding them. Number 2. People who were once connected to the subject will not be able to sense the victim of SCP-1655 in any manner, no matter the circumstance. However, any physical contact with the victim of SCP-1655 will cause mild discomfort and disgust. If the physical contact is left for a prolonged period of time, discomfort and disgust will increase in intensity the longer contact is held until the physical contact is removed. Number 3. If the subject begins to feel affection for any other living being, including animals or other humans, they will also be affected by SCP-1655 and its anomalous properties. SCP Foundation researchers hypothesize that SCP-1655 is able to extract information from its victims. In turn, SCP-1655 has the ability to alter its effects, thus allowing it to maintain complete emotional isolation on its victims, and in turn, feed on more of these negative emotions that it causes its victims to have. Number 4. The subject will ignore SCP-1655's existence. Possibly the most important detail of the SCP Foundation's findings are about the lingering effects of SCP-1655, even after it was removed from a victim. It was found that these effects of being unable to create human connections remain permanent well after removal. However, anyone the victim is not affectionate towards is not affected by SCP-1655's effects. But if that connection is made, the victim practically does not exist to that person. SCP Foundation researchers hypothesize that the parasite keeps a mental link with its victims. It then continues to feed off of the negative emotions the effects of its bite has placed on the victim. 
It makes sense why the SCP Foundation researchers made such strict special containment procedures for SCP-1655. Something undetectable that completely and mindlessly eliminates human connection is extremely dangerous if it's allowed to be left uncontained. The SCP Foundation researchers then began testing on SCP-1655 saliva and the fluid it was putting into the bloodstream of its victims. Unfortunately, the tests were unable to identify all of the different components. There were, however, powerful depressant chemicals and traces of hormones found that can negatively affect the hippocampus section of a victim's brain. The hippocampus is the area of the brain located in the temporal lobe. It is responsible for learning and acts as a storage unit for memory. And SCP-1655 appears to extract memories from its victim's hippocampus using these unknown hormones, causing the people surrounding the victim to completely detach from them. Could it be possible that SCP-1655 has telepathic abilities? While physiological examinations proved unable to confirm how SCP-1655 uses the information it retrieves from the hippocampus to affect others, it is extremely clear that it is actively causing mental anguish to its subjects, most likely in order to speed up its feeding process. So it's definitely clear that SCP-1655 feeds off of the turmoil it inflicts. But the larger questions are why and how. How did SCP-1655 develop these abilities? Was it evolution? Perhaps that is in fact the case here. Or maybe it's even simpler. Maybe the tick lacked a sustainable food source and just decided to feed on something else that was easily accessible and just as sustainable. Negativity. So we have an entity that eliminates all human bonds from the person it attaches to. Then it takes the pain and anguish a person feels from their emotional connections disappearing to sustain itself. Very dangerous stuff here that, if left to the wild, could cause unimaginable damage. Imagine if it was left in a large city allowing SCP-1655 to jump from person to person, eliminating each person's emotional connections until there is nothing left. The damage could potentially cause a broken masquerade scenario for the SCP Foundation. These scenarios occur when the SCP Foundation is unable to properly contain an anomaly, and thus knowledge of the anomalous world becomes public. Among their research into SCP-1655's biology, yet another interesting part of SCP-1655 was found. It's a female specimen and has the necessary reproductive organs. While this may seem mundane, this means that SCP-1655 may have been capable of laying eggs in the wild, implying that other members of SCP-1655 species may be out in the wild, waiting to attach itself to unknowing humans and expand their relationship-ruining reach. Further investigation has been recommended by the overseeing researchers. The SCP Foundation runs into anomalies of all shapes, sizes, and danger levels. Some anomalies may seem rather mundane, but pose danger when put into very specific circumstances. In the case of ticks in general, they have been responsible for feeding on human flesh and spreading diseases for ages. But now with SCP-1655 in the game, it seems that some of the species have turned to feeding on more than just our tangible parts. Remember earlier when I mentioned that human connection is what allowed for humans to become the dominant species? Well, there's a whole lot of us humans running around. And if there are SCP-1655 species mating and spreading among us, it won't be too long until our reign in the animal kingdom comes to a blood-sucking end. Just when we thought losing Wi-Fi connection was annoying, imagine losing all human connection. <laughs> Yikes. Now go check out SCP-2031 Ant Farm and Reconstructive Maggot's SCP-726 for more anomalies of the creepy-crawly nature from SCP Explained.